Have you all noticed that the older you get, that things hurt that never ever hurt before? Like you move your wrist and all of a sudden you have pain. It's something that never pained before. It, uh, it's frustrating, isn't it? Getting old. I think I look young, though. When I look at myself on the screen here, I, I think I look like a kid still. I still think of myself as a kid. Of course, there's all of these bumps and these lines and all these things here that pieces of skin that aren't supposed to be there. That, that's, that's better. I wonder if, if I got some crazy glue and just took a fold of this and just glued it up here right that's that's much younger looking <laughs> people will do crazy things to look younger I watched such a depressing show last night I watched uh, Ellen, and I hate watching Ellen, but I watched Ellen and her wife uh, quiz, um, oh, what's his name, the computer genius quadrillionaire, um, and they were asking him questions about this virus, and he figures it'll be 14 months before we're seeing a, a vaccine, uh, yet the other day, now, this was a month old. The other day, I uh, read somewhere that uh, uh, there's some company in the States has made a massive breakthrough. And uh, apparently, they're giving the vaccine to people for test trials. There are virtually zero side effects so far. And uh, the people are producing a tremendous number of antibodies, which means it, it is a very, very strong vaccine that they have come up with. Um, I, I, I don't understand, and I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, uh, I don't understand why we spend billions and billions and billions and trillions of dollars on things to blow us up but we hardly have spent anything on preparing for something like this. Why are there not laboratories upon laboratories upon laboratories of the best and the brightest and the most and so that when something like this occurs and it is going to occur again, there's absolutely no doubt as the world gets more and more people, we're going to see more of this. Uh, we've had all these little hints over the last few years. There was the HN1, there was SARS, and there was whatever the other one was, and the swine flu. Maybe maybe two of those are the same thing. And you could see it was going to come, this thing, this was happening. And yet nobody was prepared. The hospitals weren't prepared. Nothing was prepared. And... Uh, a doctor friend of mine told me that it's because our hospitals in North America uh, are based on a, a short-term goal scenario so that they only plan for imminent sorts of situations. I forget which country it is in Europe. One of the countries in Europe, their hospitals plan long-term and so when this happened, apparently they had no problems at all. They, they were completely ready for it. It just was no issues. Whereas we were running and frightened and all of a sudden they had to have people working round the clock to make respirators. And I, I don't know whether we still have got enough respirators. Uh, Trudeau's got lots of money now. He can sell all the guns he took from us. And uh, so... You know, it's just it's just craziness. I, I I I don't understand why there isn't common sense that to deal with this sort of thing. And uh, I like Trudeau. I he's got he's got really really nice hair. He really does. I I really like his hair. And 
I, I think he legitimately has a heart for people. I really do. I don't think I could vote liberal, but I think that he, I think he really believes in what he's doing. And you, you got to give a guy points for that, I, I think. And the other part of this, of course, is that we believe that the Lord has a hand in everything, including the leaders of our nation. And uh, so if Prime Minister Trudeau, I, I want to pay him the fullest respect, if Prime Minister Trudeau is in power, then it's because the Lord has seen it so. And then as such, as a Christian, I must yield to his authority and do so with a joyful heart. I don't get to nip at him and slander him and throw things at him. I, I, I don't get to do that. As a good citizen of this kingdom and the kingdom up above, I have to go along with what the Lord has provided for me. The same is true in the United States. That's one of the things that bothered me so much about the very terrible way that they set out to destroy Trump was for whatever reason. I believe the Lord put him in that place to do a job and once he's in that place, you support him. That's just me. I'm simple-minded uh, for sure. Uh, but I believe very much in being faithful. Being faithful to the Lord, being faithful to his calling, and being faithful uh, to those people that he has put in authority over us. As we gather, may your spirit work within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name. Knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship, we'll be blessed because we came. We'll be blessed because we came. Well, a few announcements uh, before we begin today. I hope you are blessed by this time together. My Annie's having a baby. My daughter, Laurel Christina Ann, Figgy. She's not Figgy anymore. She's Knelson now. But Laurel Christina Ann is having a baby. And I just couldn't be more excited. I already have an amazing grandson. His name is Landon, and he's smart, and he's beautiful, and he's healthy, and I'm just so excited. Uh, I hardly ever get to see him. I haven't seen him for months, um, and his folks are always so busy, we, we don't even get Skyping time, but I'd sure like to do more of that. I, I miss him terribly. So I will have two grandchildren um, because my daughter and son-in-law have been given a call to Warman. Uh, we will be able to see them pretty regularly, and that's exciting. So uh, looking very forward to that. Um, we had a number of church council meetings this afternoon. I have another church council meeting at Mustatum. I had a church council meeting at Melfort. And they are talking about doing this sort of thing, uh, online church, uh, on a regular basis. Hudson Bay is going to be talking about it. Whether they are interested or not, well, that's another question, but they're going to discuss it. Um, I think we're ready for this now. We are ready for this kind of, uh, of service, for this kind of church. And uh, the only thing I fear is that people will fall away. And um, and the other thing I, I fear is for my job because I don't think people uh, will give an offering to something like this 
rather than in church when that plate is passed around people you know tie put their tithe in it i don't know if people will do that uh, over a video church like this um, I've thought long and hard about the possibility that one day when I retire that uh, this sort of thing would make sense to have a church, an online congregation of sorts where you would visit every day and with people and answer questions and pray together and read scripture together and study together. That, I, I think that it's time has come. People really, really want this. So I'm excited. I am, because I'm a techie guy. And uh, I, I don't worship the technology, but I do get awfully giddy around it. <laughs> it's pretty exciting. Um, the other announcement, uh, I'm still looking for help, uh, money for the camera that we will use for Sunday mornings from the front of the church. I sure wish I had a young man or a young woman who would really get into videography, who would sit up in the balcony and run a camera and uh, have a computer on hand so that you could put hymns up onto the screen and so on and so on and so on. Um, and maybe somebody will come along. Um, if that's the Lord's will, then for sure somebody will come along. And uh, so we're waiting to see what the Lord has in store for us with that. Um, if you have prayer concerns, um, please uh, put them online so I can read them. If you have something, something to pray about today or someone who you would like us to pray for, please put it online and then I can uh, see your comments and... Uh, we can pray for whatever your need might be. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for an end to this pandemic. We pray for a return to life and livelihood, for patience and understanding, um, and for the gospel's increase despite every worldly setback. Let us pray to the Lord. And for those who are struggling with trying to figure all this out and with depression and with sadness and loneliness, oh Lord, provide your presence. Let them feel the glory of being in your presence. Remind them they're not alone. In Jesus' name. Send your spirit to be with us now as we worship. Amen. I was talking to a healthcare professional yesterday, and she told me that they have never seen so much depression and so much sadness from people in their lives. The hospitals are just brimming with people who are, I mean, the, the, the clinics with people who are coming in asking for antidepressants because they are just beside themselves. I mean, this is a depressing time. It just weighs on you. And it's a false weight. It's a false thing. It's, it's all drummed up by the media and by that blessed media. I get so frustrated with them. Uh, a doctor said to me yesterday that he doesn't think there's a case of COVID-19 between here and the Alberta border. And yet here we are wearing masks and we're worried, we're scared, we're afraid to come out, we're afraid to get together, we can't touch each other, or hug each other, there's nothing. We're, we're just terrified of it. And it's, it's hype. At least here, for us, right now, maybe it'll get worse, but when it does, we'll be warned and we'll, we'll, we'll act appropriately. But for right now, this is it's very frustrating, and our seniors are terrified. They have been terrified by the media and by people who have frightened them with all sorts of stories and, uh, um, and threats. Um, so it's very frustrating. 
More than hearts can imagine or minds comprehend, God's bountiful gifts are ours without end. We ask for a cupful when the vast sea is ours. We pick a small rosebud from a garden of flowers. We reach for a sunbeam, but the sun still abides. We draw one short breath, but there's air on all sides. Whatever we ask for falls short of God's giving, for his greatness exceeds every facet of living. And always God's ready and eager and willing to pour out his mercy, completely fulfilling all of man's needs for peace, joy, and rest, for God gives his children whatever is best. Just give him a chance to open his treasures, and he'll fill your life with unfathomable pleasures. Pleasures that never grow worn out and faded, and leave us depleted, disillusioned, and jaded. For God has a storehouse just filled to the brim with all that man needs, if we'll only ask him. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Wow. I'm still of the age that we actually had that uh, in our readers when I was a boy in school. We used to study that in our classrooms. And of course that has long changed. Now they think uh, something terrible has happened for, for um, uh, that to be read in school. But I'm going to click you off now and go over to my message. And uh, this is a... Uh, this message today is about clinkers. You probably didn't know you're a clinker. I remember when I was a boy, Hogan's Heroes, and there was uh, Sergeant Clink. Or was it Corporal Clink? I can't remember. <laughs> Colonel Clink. It was Colonel Clink. But my father was a farmer. And which, like some of you, meant he could do a little bit of almost anything. He had some veterinarian skills. He could really butcher. He had a little bit of engineering. He had a little bit of fix-it for engines. And he had farming skills. He was an incredibly good carpenter. Built our barn and uh, other things in the neighborhood, our granaries, sheds, a number of our neighbor's barns. And as I grew older, I worked with him, and I learned a great deal. He handed me a hammer, showed me how to hit a hammer, how to hold a hammer from the end of the hammer, how to swing it properly. Now, he also was good with masonry, and I don't know where he picked that up. But I remember one time watching him and my uncle Casper work on some fence or something they were doing in Uncle Casper's yard, and they were doing it with Estevan red brick. And uh, anyways, one day I noticed that sometimes they would pick up a brick and then they, if, if this was the brick, they would take the, the uh, piece of equipment they had with them and they, they would tap it just. And if it made kind of a clinking sound, they would throw it in a pile and it was going to be dis discarded it was going to be thrown away and I, I asked them about it one day I said why why do you throw these ones away that make that clinking sound and to my amazement my father said we discard all of the clinker bricks they are the bricks that are heavier than the others usually and they make a different sound when you tap them 
a clinking kind of sound, and they're often a little misshaped, and even their color is distorted. And this usually happens when they're happens when they're fired too close to other bricks, or the mixture just isn't quite right, and so you always have some clicker clinkers in the stacks. So we usually just toss them. I guess they also were weaker, or they broke easier, or something. Otherwise, I can't imagine why they threw them away. Now, I couldn't help but think of this when I read the words from the scripture reading that I'm using for today, which is Acts 7, 55 through 60. Uh, and this one from 1 Peter. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house. That's from 1 Peter. Like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house. And Peter talks a lot about stones and rocks. I mean, Petra means rocks. Uh, you know, you, you are rock. And upon these rocks, I will build my church. There's a play in words he uses. You are Peter. And, and upon this Petros, I will build my church. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, he writes, and, and Peter, Peter writes. He talks a lot about rocks and stones, and I wonder if it's not partly due to the fact uh, that, you know, Jesus referred to him as the rock of the church, the one that the gates of hell could not prevail against. Now, I think if Peter had known about clinker bricks, he might well have said, come to Jesus, the greatest clinker brick of them all, the one everyone else rejected and thought of no use at all, but precious in God's sight. And let him make you the clinker bricks you are too, into a spiritual building, the church. God's people, a community of faith created to serve God and continue the work of Christ in the world. My church here in, and it's not my church, the church I serve here in, at Zion Lutheran in Nippon, one of four, is a brick church. And I think of this every single day I walk into the front door. I think about my father, uh, you know, clinking those bricks. And I've often wondered how many of these bricks are clinker bricks. My last church was in Dixon, Alberta. And the people of Dixon had more guts than anyone I've ever known when it came to building a church. They built a church that was about as different looking as you will ever find. And what a wonderful structure it is. When you go into the sanctuary, you will see that the ceiling has is stripped with cedar boards. The whole ceiling is strips of cedar boards with separation. They're about an inch apart all the way down. And the board, the church is in three levels. And well, you can see it uh, right up here behind me. And uh, the three, three levels represent the Trinity. But inside, you have all of these boards. Now, some of these boards are fat, short boards. Some of them are skinny, long boards. And the key is none of them have been planed. They are all rough wood, rough sawn wood. And they came up with that idea because that is their way of saying that like the people, we're all different. Some of us are short and fat. Some of us are tall and thin. Uh, some of us are older working. Some of us are lighter colored. Some are darker colored. Uh, we are all different. And the most important part is that they hadn't been planed. In other words, God's not done with us yet. We still have work to do. And we're all rough around the edges. I love that theology. And I thought it was brilliant when I came to, to that little town. We are, my friends, at least I are a clinker brick. And you know what? The church is made up of clinker bricks. Jesus himself was rejected. Peter was a clinker brick. 
Jesus was a clinker brick. To be the cornerstone of this new spiritual building, the church, that stone that aligns the rest of the stones that really holds them all together is Jesus Christ. He's referred to as the cornerstone, as that thing that brings it all together. And yet he was rejected. He was also this clinker brick, but he was chosen by God for the most important role of all, the building of God's kingdom. So God has found a way to take clinker bricks and make use of them. That verse in scripture that talks about how we are like we, we are like a, 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 a vase or pottery, you know, easily broken, easily chipped, easily dropped, useful to be sure. You know, we, you can fill up a, 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 a pot and use it for something, but if you drop it, it can break, and, and all pots have flaws. They all have cracks and marks on them, and uh, it's just what we are. We are not finished yet. We go through this world waiting for that time when we will enter the kingdom of God and our bodies, we will rise up. We believe in the resurrection of the body and our bodies will be glorified in heaven. Uh, Paul talks about it when he talks about how uh, the, uh, um, uh, the imperfect will become perfect. The... Uh, temporal will become immortal, that we will be glorified, our bodies will become perfected in heaven. Now, I don't think that means we're going to change our appearance. I, I don't at all, because scripture says that we will know each other in heaven. And so, you know, if we change our, our appearance, well, then that that's not possible. So we will look like we do, but well, I won't hurt when I move my wrist, and my knee won't hurt so so much, or at all. We'll probably be able to stand forever, walk forever. We will be perfect, but now, in this life, we could best be described as clinker bricks. Listen to what Peter says about people like us, and Stephen, and even himself. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. You may be a clinker brick, but you are a member of the family of God. You are a royal priest, a holy nation. You are one of God's chosen people. One of the complaints I often hear from persons outside the church is, why should I attend your church? It's full of hypocrites. In other words, you have nothing but clinker bricks in your church. You know what? They're right. My church, our church, we're full of hypocrites. I'm a hypocrite. And the person who asks the question is most certainly a hypocrite. And where better for hypocrites to go than to the altar and to ask for forgiveness? And that's why we're here. We aren't here because we're perfect. Every word I speak from the pulpit, in the end, is, is hypocrisy. I can't live up to anything that I preach. I mean, to perfection. I try, but I'm so far from perfect. I am so cracked and broken. And when you tap on me, man, my clink is even louder than anyone's. Paul said he was chief among sinners. Well, around here, I'm chief among sinners. And I don't say that proudly at all. I had somebody say to me once when I said that, you sound like you're proud about me. I'm not. But it's a fact. As a pastor, I should know better. And I often don't act as if I'm any better. And the result is I am chief among sinners. I am here. We are here. Because the great brick mason has chosen us. He is building his church out of clinker bricks. And he wants us all to take our place. To hold up this structure. To provide a space for people to come. And to kneel and to pray and to repent. And to encounter God. 
in the word of God and in the in the sacraments and by the very presence of God as seen through all the rest of us clinker bricks, flawed, broken, but strengthened and reinforced by the great brick mason himself and in fellowship with one another. You take one clinker brick and put it all alone, it might not be that strong, but you take a thousand clinker bricks and you know, plaster them together, and suddenly you have a wall. You have something strong, and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Scripture says so. Jesus said so. We need to be reminded of something. The building is not the church. As the little song says, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. The material God uses to create the church is human lives. It's you and me. We're the church, not this building. And so if this COVID comes back and we have to stay at home and watch church on TV some more, well, so what? So what? The building isn't the church. You're the church. We clinker bricks. We make up the church. Here's this very well, my friend, because this cannot be something that I can state any stronger. So many voices out there, and even within yourself, sometimes are telling you that you are just a nothing, that you're a reject, that you don't matter that you're a clinker brick that has been thrown away and so there you you stand out in the middle of a field somewhere and you have no reason. Done, I've left you feeling worthless, a failure, a wretched sinner and now this pandemic is going on and you're trapped in your own house and you're afraid to come out for fear of dying. You're a wretched sinner. Well, so what? Say to those who deride you, I am a child of the living God. I may be broken, but I stand as I am to serve my Lord. And to him I am precious beyond measure. I am a prince. I am a princess. Heir to the throne of God. And when I die one day, I will join my father in heaven. He has chosen me. He chose me to be part of his kingdom. He chose me because he loves me. He chose, chose me because he knows me. He chose me because I am precious to him. And in his eyes, I am perfectly me. No one can be better at being me than I can. Call me what you want. I am his. And he is mine. Did you know that until the 1920s, clinker bricks were thought to be useless? Brickyards had piles and piles of them. But during that time, it all began to change. Suddenly, clinker bricks were found to have beauty and strength of their own. They are now used as artwork, for no two clinker bricks are the same. And they're in demand. They still are. They're considered valuable antiques used in all kinds of ways, from gardens to walkways to fireplaces, even to walls. There is so much beauty and worth in what Christ can do with even a clinker brick. 
He can find beauty even in that and bring it out for the world to see. In preparing this sermon, I was on the internet and I came across a most unusual church. It's Gates Presbyterian Church in Rochester, New York. And although it's a very old congregation, it has a building that was constructed in 1960. Beneath the picture of the church, I read this. The bricks that made up the exterior walls, as well as the walls of the sanctuary, are called clinker bricks. These are basically the bricks that were normally rejected by masons because they were imperfect or defective. These clinker bricks represent not only that we as Christians are all unique, as no two bricks are the same, but also that God, as well as the church, accepts and loves us with all of our imperfections. Way to go, Gates Presbyterian. Gates Presbyterian is a clinker brick church. Bethany Lutheran Church in Dixon is a clinker brick church. St. Paul Lutheran in Radisson is a clinker brick church. First Saskatchewan Lutheran is a clinker brick church. Zion in Nipawin, St. Paul's in Melfort, Zion in Good Shepherd in Mustatum and Hudson Bay. We are all clinker brick churches. For if perfection were required for being part of the church, Man, there'd be no one here. We would be empty and we'd never see a soul walk through the doors because we are all imperfect and we are all broken. God loves you as you are. So be joyful, even with the imperfections of who you are. When your knee hurts a little or your wrist hurts when you twist it, Realize that even as imperfect as we might be, we are children of the risen Lord. Amen.